Okay, so hello everyone and uh, welcome to my talk about the splash screen uh, for Embedded Linux 101, how to customize your your boot sequence. Uh, today I'll be speaking about the splash screen and especially about the, the customization. So we're gonna see that from different point of views. Um, this means that we will discuss about the typical boot process on Embedded Linux uh, devices. And just a disclaimer before starting this presentation, uh, this talk does not cover um, some interesting features such as boot time optimization. So if you are interested in or you need deeper information, uh, feel free to reach some uh, bootlin materials. Uh, I think it is a good uh, starting point. So here, just uh, let's first begin with some details uh, about me. I am Pierre-Jean Texier. I work at Lafon Technology uh, as an embedded Linux engineer, where my job is to maintain and develop operating systems um, that we have uh, on our payment terminal for fuel dispenser. Um, I am 30 years old, soon 31, and I am also a father of uh, two young, uh, young guys. For sure, I am a free open source software enthusiast, and so means that I try uh, as much as possible to contribute to uh, open source projects um, such as Ubuntu, uh, Linux kernel, Yocto, or Buildwood. Uh, it depends, on, in fact, the time uh, that I have. So with two children at home, it's sometimes complicated. So I try. Uh, I'm also the co-author of the book Yocto for Raspberry Pi and. I was also author for new Linux magazine France and Open Silicium, uh, so you can uh, read them uh, on the internet. Uh, here, here's the agenda for for today. Um, I will try to go as quickly as possible uh, since we have only 30 minutes. So I'm gonna present you in first Lafon and my job at Lafon, but also projects. Uh, that we developed uh, at Lafon. So then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna explain one uh, why a splash screen uh, on embedded devices. After that, uh, we will discuss about U-Boot and how we can uh, interact with it with, to deploy a, a splash uh, image. So for sure, in this chapter we will um, use the microchip SAMA5 uh, development kit. Uh, and then uh, the Linux kernel uh, will be discussed and I'm gonna try to illustrate the splash screen in its uh, context by uh, making a small demonstration uh, on the Raspberry Pi uh, which is a, a, a good uh, community development board. So after that there will be a big part uh, on the user space area where I'll try to show you how to add a dynamic splash screen. So this part uh, will be made with a Raspberry Pi 2. Okay, so, and then after, at the end, uh, there is um, a summary and uh, a Q&A session. So Lafon, um, a few words about Lafon. Uh, this is a company uh, founded in uh, 1959 uh, by Georges Lafon. Uh, at Bordeaux. Now we are near Bordeaux at Bassens, but uh, uh, always near uh, Bordeaux, so it is fine. Um, since 2006, um, we are part of the MADI group. MADI group is just a, a, multi, a group that uh, acquired uh, multiple uh, company over the time, uh, such as Lafon, but also Magic Italia and uh, other companies. Uh, this is a leading industrial group uh, specialized in energy. Uh, in fact, for, in for, for example, um, at Lafon, we developed a fuel dispenser uh, to mobile station, charging terminal for electric uh, vehicles, uh, payment terminal, and so on. So a lot of products uh, uh, in this area. So we have 10 sites uh, around the Europe. So we are uh, around um, around uh, four thousand uh, employees uh, in Europe. 
just a few words about the my service so the payment service at Lafon. Uh, so the embedded services in fact so we, the service the payment service is subdivided in fact in two services so the payment service itself where my colleagues try to comply with uh, the payment um, uh, the payment development, so the certification and so on. And we have also the more uh, system oriented uh, services where we have a lot of embedded Linux. So this is my service and we developed the uh, operating system, also uh, the board support package um, and so on. So other activities. So regarding the payment terminals that we developed, we have some requirements, for instance, the PCI DSS, PCI P2P, and we also have to comply with the GE card bancaire and many other um, certification, in fact. Um, so as we have requirements for uh, certifications, we need to make sure that our device is considered uh, safe and secured. So some key features uh, has been implemented to answer about the security question on a better side. So we have a trust zone, the secure boot enable, and many other uh, security uh, features, um, for instance. For sure, we are also attached to the free software community. So which is why we use some of um, them uh, inside our uh, architecture. So for instance, we use Qt for the graphical user interface, Yocto uh, for the build system, and curl uh, live event, live XML2 for, for applicative uh, development, for sure, with the constraints of the licenses. I mean, GPL, for, for instance. Uh, for sure, uh, sometimes uh, no need to reinvent the wheel. So this is why we, uh, we love the, the open source. Um, about the, the products that we develop here are the last generation. So, so this is um, APL 3.5. So the unattended payment terminal that you can find on gas station um, now deployed since uh, February. So if you are a lucky guy and you go in gas station in France, uh, it is possible to see uh, this new payment terminal. You can see on the left our last uh, last EHM new design compared to, uh, to the predecessor, the Apple 3 uh, legacy. This one is uh, still live and you can find uh, this one, um, for instance, uh, at Total or Carrefour uh, and many other um, uh, gas station. Let's start it. Let's speak about introduction. So why a splash screen just before? Um, uh, here, a definition of the splash screen. Of, in fact, this is just a graphical control element consisting of a window containing an image, a logo, or a, the current version of the software sometimes. And in the embedded world, it is not uh, so uncommon to see such a feature for a system that have a panel display connected, uh, as you know. This kind of integration, in fact, provides a sense of responsiveness for the person which is uh, in front of, of the device. Okay, so for instance, we have a, a PC. So during the boot sequence of your PC, you have a splash screen too. Uh, the same for a uh, smartphone. If you have Android, Apple, you have also a splash screen during, during the boot sequence. So it's sometimes necessary to, to generate a splash screen during the boot sequence for, uh, for the customer. But also it's sometimes uh, very interesting to display as soon as possible uh, a custom logo, um, look, I mean, for instance, a vendor logo. So this is why I put the, uh, the Lafon logo. So where we can find a splash screen during the, the boot sequence? In fact, in embedded, we usually find the following three steps during the boot process of an embedded Linux device. So first we find the bootloader, which is uh, in charge of the low level initialization. So I mean, the hardware initialization. It is also able, uh, as you know, to load an application, a binary, or something else from an external storage, for instance, USB, or from the flash. Uh, but this one is mainly used to load an operating system kernel. Okay, um, the bootloader is also able to do other things since uh, this one is uh, generally uh, implemented with a minimalistic uh, shell that provides a various command to interact with the, with the hardware, master edge, and so on. Uh, 
Okay. In our case, uh, the bootloader is able to is capable capable of um, showing a splash screen. So most of the time in a static way. So a simple bitmap file. But uh, for instance, if you take um, Bearbox, Bearbox uh, is able to display a PNG file. Uh, U-boot is um, only a bitmap file. So this is the first. The, the bootloader is the first place where a splash screen can be loaded. Um, then we will find the, the Linux kernel, uh, where its role is to manage hardware resources. It also provides a, an abstraction a layer which allows to use a space application to use hardware, as you know, and many, many, many other things, features. And also, the Linux kernel provides the ability to display a picture early during the, the boot process, so named um, kernel splash. So due to its format, the splash uh, file is also displayed in a static way, not in, in a dynamic way. We will see later during the user space. Um, the, kernel, uh, last, the kernel's last initialization action is to start the init program, which is uh, the first user space application started by the kernel after mounting the, the boot file system. In fact, this program is in charge of finalizing system starter by spawning various application and starting some software components in user space area. So, um, as you, I think, you know very well some init systems such as systemd, buzzybox init, or finit as well. Uh, for example, the splash screen, the splash program, so the one is in charge to run the animation, is run by the init system itself. So. On user space side, the splash screen is uh, often displayed uh, in a dynamic uh, way. So I mean a progress bar or a, um, a spinning wheel until that the main application is considered uh, ready. So the application, I mean a graphical uh, user interface. So the first point is about U-Boot. For this setup, we'll use uh, the Microchip Sama 5 uh, development kit plus uh, the PDA touchscreen display, which is very well uh, uh, maintained and very well supported inside the U-Boot sources. So in this setup, the image, the image is uh, generated with uh, Yocto and uh, with the help of CAS, which CAS is a, a tool that allows to uh, manage uh, bitback and meta layers. Uh, so for instance, the meta layer. So, just a, a quicker uh, example. CAS is uh, quite similar to um, to Yocto Cooker. Uh, Yocto Cooker uses a JSON for uh, describes um, the layer inside the file, and CAS uses a YAML um, structure. We will use the Dunfell release, which is the LTS version, and we will use those also the April 2021 version of U-Boot. In fact, the Atmel's fork uh, of the upstream uh, U-boot. Uh, first, um, as always, says, bootloader is uh, um, able to show a splash screen uh, early uh, in the boot process. So, in our case, U-boot can support only uh, bitmap images. So, first, that means that we need to create uh, a custom bitmap file. So, we will use a, a vendor logo. Uh, with which match the, the the display resolution. So, with the help of GIMP, for for instance, it is quite simple to to generate uh, the desired uh, image. So, after that, we will will have a PNG file, and we need to convert it uh, to a compliant format. So, the first part the first part of the command convert our image to a PPM file. So. Uh, uh, portable pixmap file, then the second allows to reduce the number of colors in our image to uh, 256, when the final part allows to convert the final PPM file to a bitmap file by specifying, in fact, um, the number of bits per pixel. Okay, so in this case, head bytes per pixel. Okay. 
Um, once uh, the BMP file have been correctly and properly generated, we must keep it close to hers as well. We need to to deploy uh, to deploy this file uh, later. Um, so first, we need to to enable the bitmap uh, command from from menu config, but we need also um, enable some other option. Uh, important option. So we need to first to, to enable the DM video the option. So to enable the, the video subsystem and also enable the driver for the LCD controller. So the Atmel LCD controller. Um, the LCD support is enabled upstream but disabled on Atmel's fork, as you as you can see on my slide. So we need to revive this functionality. So. From, from make menu config, we're able to enable uh, both of them. So I'll let you show the screen. Oh, once uh, the generation of the new binary, U boot binary is here, uh, we can see that um, the static logo is uh, shown uh, on the display. In fact, it is normal because um, on Atmel uh, community, if the config DM video is set, uh, the vendor logo is displayed. So in this case, uh, by the, the logo is stored, is stored inside the U-boot binary itself, defined statically in a bitmap header file and used by the function, uh, as you can see on the slide. So this function called um, the, VM, the video BMP display to um, display a bitmap uh, the bmp file in fact so as you can see this function takes as parameter uh, the lcd itself and some information about the logo in fact it is not very convenient for our use case because you we need to put um, a clean image on the screen so we can simply remove this uh, call of the function uh, inside the board definition file in fact, this vendor logo is display because uh, we use uh, a community platform. So this is why um, Microchip uh, decided to to use this uh, functionality. Okay. So once uh, we have made this modification, we'll have uh, to use the fat load command that permits to load a binary file from um, the DOS file system. Our case here because um, the, pre the previously generated bitmap file is stored on the first FAT partition of the SD card, in fact. So for your information, the second uh, one is uh, a next for formatted partition. So after loading the BMP file and before displaying uh, this one on the display, we are able to show um, the characteristic of, uh, of this one. OK, so OK. Resolution is okay and 8 byte per pixel. So we are able to, to display this one inside the on the display. So as you can see on the slide, uh, we have a clean display without uh, a crappy uh, information. So okay, now we are able to, to create a, a script that contains um, the sequence and we can uh, store them inside the U-boot environment. But okay, so not very convenient too, because of, in fact, uh, you would support uh, the splash screen feature out of the box. We just need to keep uh, our configuration as is to enable uh, the config splash screen from kconfig, so from menu config, in fact. So if this uh, uh, option is defined inside our configuration, we are able to manage other um, variables inside the U-boot environment. So the first one is a splash file. So if splash file is defined uh, as default, is defined as a splash.bmp, but we are able to uh, define another uh, name for our splash file. Splash image defines the address where the splash file will be loaded uh, in memory. And there is also two other options that we need to, to set. In fact, the first one is a config splash screen align that allows to uh, manage the coordinates from the display. And also the config splash source uh, option that 
permits to uh, define where we uh, where is stored in fact the the BMP. It can be from the EMC, SD, USB, SATA, or also from the the feed image. Okay. Uh, here an example from a station. So here um, the generated uh, bitmap file. So my dictat BMP, the space image at the specific address. So I I said we use the first partition of the SD card. So splash host is equal to MMC file system. So now we are able to save uh, inside the environment. We need also to uh, to define the splash post position for. In fact, so if uh, if this variable is not defined, uh, we have the splash uh, the bootloader uh, strings that shown on the display how you, as you can see on the left. So we need to to define them. In case uh, of this definition is not uh, made, you can. Uh, directly configure the, this one from the configuration. And there is a config hide logo version uh, to uh, not show the, the bootloader string. So that's it for, for your boot. Let's now uh, speak about the Linux kernel. Uh, from the Linux kernel, we will use the Raspberry Pi plus the official touchscreen and the same setup. Uh, so then file release plus the following Linux kernel. Uh, as I said before, the Linux kernel has also a static splash screen support through the boot up logo option, so named kernel splash. So the most famous one is Chux. Uh, I think you uh, already see uh, seen this this one inside uh, in embedded uh, world, and this one is overridden by the first Raspberry Pi. Okay, and we will use another custom one, so the official logo of this uh, event. So instead of using the default um, file format file that we use uh, the Linux kernel, we will generate the logo Li and the clut, uh, .ppm. So let's first generate the, the logo and convert this one to a correctly uh, formatted image. So once we will have this image, we will need to put uh, the modification inside the, the Linux trees. Okay, so first we need to add a kconfig entry, so default to yes. Also, uh, add an entry inside the make file, uh, add an entry of the reference of the logo, a reference uh, of the structure of the logo, in fact, and once uh, it is okay, the Linux kernel is able to uh, display our splash screen. Okay. So here is a rendering from the Raspberry Pi. From the user space area, uh, we'll use the same setup, in fact, Raspberry Pi plus uh, then file release. Uh, in user space area, we are also able to, uh, to play with a static image, but it's not very uh, um, as a very convenient, in fact. So, for instance, there is a lot of many projects that we can uh, use. So, FB, FBI from FBDAR. So, we are able to play with a frame buffer, as, uh, as I shown by the, the slide. You are also able to use the FBVs, so the image frame buffer viewer. And you can also reach the, the following uh, article from Christophe, uh, which uh, talk about this. Uh, for the GMO, I prefer to use a, a dynamic splash screen. So the most famous one I think is PSplash. PSplash is just a, a user space graphical uh, boot splash screen that um, allows to run an animation uh, through a progress bar uh, during the boot sequence. And this one is fully configurable uh, from the logo, from the colors, and so on. This one is a reference, in fact, for Yocto, and this one is also supported by uh, by Billroot. So uh, the main advantage of this uh, splash screen, this is one, this um, this is uh, we can interact from an external program to uh, write uh, some information on the screen. For instance, I don't know if you see uh, on the slide, uh, there is a FIFO on the user space area, so you can put. Um, uh, a text or um, 
we can play with the progression, in fact. So also support system day, thanks to Toradex for, for this addition. And use also by a software update if you need to, to follow the, the update of your device. So here are um, a quick setup that I made uh, to, to show you how to uh, configure easily the, the P-Splash setup. So in this case, I just take our, uh, um, a generic logo. So the Lafon logo, I made some modifications about the, the header file to configure the colors of the progress bar. And you for sure, you have many, many other possibilities. You are, can configure the background, the text, color, and the, the default startup message and, and many other. Here, a quick test. So here with both uh, two examples with the official uh, Lee event with the Lafon logo. So I made a quick example all to interact with the external program. So named uh, P splash right uh, to use uh, to use uh, the P splash from user space. Okay. Uh, another one interesting uh, name Easy Splash. Uh, the first public release was made uh, last year during the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> Uh, but the first commit, I think, was made in uh, 2015. I don't, I'm, quite, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not quite totally sure. I, I need to check. But uh, developed, uh, developed and maintained by the OS system uh, company, so a Brazilian company, where uh, Otavio Salvador is the, the, the CTO and the CEO. The advantage of, the soli of this solution is um, it is like quite similar to Android. In fact, you just have to generate a zip archive with uh, some PNG file inside, and you, uh, you have just to feed the, the main program to read the sequence of, uh, of this. So um, the advantage also, is also, uh, there is also other advantage, such as um, the ability to configure for an OEM uh, solution so if you have a system where a, a customer wants to uh, customize this boot sequence you just have to put uh, the archive inside the right path in fact all the animation is is, is described inside the description file so named desk.txt some similar to android now the latest version supports Rust as default and not use the um, PNG as default, and, but use a, a video uh, as default. There is a, a recipe inside Yocto. So here a quick example to generate the, oops, sorry, to generate the, the sequence, uh, you can use a FFmpeg from the video to a PNG file, then just have to generate a clean tree with our, all the parts inside. So with um, on top of that, the description file. So the first line of the description file describes uh, the resolution of the screen plus the, the FPS that you want uh, to, conf to, to use. OK. So in my case, I use part one, the vendor logo, part two, uh, generic uh, animation, and part three, uh, custom and also another animation. So this means that the three animation must be played completely uh, during the boot sequence, and the part one is played two times. In fact, as described inside the description file, at the end you just have to uh, zip uh, as follows. So here a quick example for the um, for the Raspberry Pi just has to clone uh, the official repository and configure the OpenGL context and uh, add support for the Raspberry Pi and just run Mac. After that, you just have to put the binary and you can play with it. For sure, you need to integrate inside your init with, with your init system. So for instance, you can generate a systemd service file and, and generate uh, on your site. So, here, a quick example, uh, if I have the time. Uh, OK, so here my Raspberry Pi is alive. I will just 
turn off and turn on. Okay, so here is the boot is the U boot sequence. Then you can see the splash screen of the Linux kernel, and then we are able to see the um, easy splash uh, animation. Okay. Ah, I don't know. Uh, it seems that you are not able to uh, to see <laughs> the demo. Sorry. Okay. So I will show you at the end. Okay, so many other user space programs. It exists a lot of programs. So for instance, the BuzzyBox FB Splash program, the BNOD program. The most famous one, I think, is Plymouth, uh, used by Balena OS, Torizon Corps from Toradex, from the distro, for instance, Uboot. There is also the Jet Splash. I think this one is not maintained anymore. And there is also a fork of B Splash. Which is uh, which support um, the GIF animation. Okay, so integrating a splash screen is often nice to have, as I said. So and often a requ requirement uh, for customers. Okay, uh, splash screen integration depends on your needs. In fact, uh, if you expect to provide the uh, reactivity, so a feedback uh, within the first second of Power Hub sequence, so you need a a splash screen on bootloader side, and if you expect the feedback two or three seconds after power up your device, you will have to um, to generate a splash screen on the Linux kernel uh, area. Okay. Now, if your expectation is not about the reactivity, but rather about dynamic splash screen until that your graphical application is ready, then your the user space uh, will be a good choice. Uh, finally, if you need a splash screen throughout uh, the boot sequence, you need to enable each of them. It is possible. Okay. Uh, I put the materials of uh, this presentation on my GitHub, so feel free to, to reach uh, the material. Okay. Um, okay, it's time to... It's time... That's it for me. Uh, and thanks for attending. So... I hope you find it uh, useful and interesting. So if you have any remarks, questions, feel free to to, to ask uh, on the chat or uh, I, don't know, I think <laughs> the chat is not working. So feel free to ping me on the on Slack. Thanks again and bye-bye. Thank you, Jean-Luc. Okay, I will try to... Um... Okay, I will try to... Um... to show the, the demo on the, on the screen. Just let me... Uh, some seconds. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Upload now. Uh, it's not this one, sorry. Uh, okay, so I think you're able to see something on the on the screen. I will present you the demo with a uh, easy splash.
Okay, so now in this case, we're able to see the, the first splash queen, so the Linux kernel splash queen, and now we're able to uh, to see the easy splash uh, animation. Uh, regarding your question, Hervé, uh, yes, it exists some uh, implementation of the um, splash screen for DRM. Um, I think uh, this is the evolution of Easy Splash. I need to check. Uh, as you know, mainly used uh, with the, the frame buffer, but I think we need to check uh, uh, deeper or um, some implementation. So if you need to to ask, uh, feel free to to ping me on on Twitter or or, or LinkedIn if if you want. Do not hesitate. <laughs> 